I'm Jim Check. You're watching Kelowna Now. Today, I have a very special guest with me. I have Jeff Booth, author of, a, of a, The Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is, uh, is the Key to Abundant Future. And he's going to be one of our keynotes at our AI Summit on September 27th here in Kelowna. Welcome. Thanks. Great to be here. So, uh, artificial intelligence, Bitcoin, sustainable energy, they all kind of like converge on each other. Because obviously Bitcoin mining in that requires a lot of energy as it does artificial intelligence for, for those big computers to run. Um, how do you see it all fitting together? Yeah, it, it's an extension of what I talked about in my book. Um, or, uh, uh, two chapters in my book were dedicated to artificial intelligence, which is a, um, a, produ a productivity tool that makes us better. Right, it allows us to work less because computers are doing more of the work, and that productivity should flow to society in the form of lower prices. But from the existing financial system, which is designed to to steal that productivity through inflation, it gets concentrated in very few corporations and and and, and big government. And so the only way to allow that productivity to flow uh, to society in the form of lower prices is through a different system. Um, and the existing system that most people are measuring in can't allow that. So that's where Bitcoin Im, uh, is part of that story. That Bitcoin, Bitcoin people, I think, are looking at Bitcoin completely wrong. What I think it is is a, is a it is a protocol uh, bounded by energy um, that that is different. That's outside the system. So if you measure prices in Bitcoin. Um, uh, all prices will trend towards zero. All prices will fall forever. If you measure, if you measure Bitcoin from the system that's manipulating money, it will look like Bitcoin prices going up. Yeah, um, Elon Musk has talked about it too, about energy and, and saying like the kind of the really cool thing that's that's coming is energy independence and he's and he's working on giving people that energy independence through solar and through evs and all that stuff and 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 that kind of goes with bitcoin because bitcoin miners typically use quite a bit of energy as well as does artificial intelligence and i think you've done a podcast with peter diamandis who's also going to be at the AI summit is that correct yeah i haven't done a podcast with him but i know peter well yeah. I mean, he talks a lot about Bitcoin as well. And he talks a lot about artificial intelligence and and again, the convergence of technologies and that kind of stuff. And I think we're at a we're at a point where we can kind of see more independence for the actual consumer where they can get energy independence, money independence and even um, like consumables if, if we can get a stable money supply. Yeah, so this is all connected. But if you think right now, most people are looking at Bitcoin as use, a user of, of lots of energy, which it is. And that's how it protects uh, uh, the Bitcoin network through that use. But it, what it is, is a, it, um, it, a better way to look at Bitcoin is uh, it, through energy anyway. So assume you own a bakery, uh, Jim, and, a, and, the, and one day I come to you and I say, I'll buy all the remaining bread that you throw out every day but I want a discount. And then the next day you produce two times as much bread um, and I come in and buy it all. The next day you produce four times as much bread. I come in and buy it. The next day you say, I'm going to buy more bread, uh, ovens and everything else. So I'm going to invest in my business. I'm going to produce a hundred times more bread and I come in and buy it all. That's Bitcoin. And replace bread with energy and you understand how Bitcoin creates abundant energy by by buying on the margin all of the energy and always having a buyer for energy and that's that's all over the world i've been to 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 villages in africa that have have electricity for the first time because of bitcoin mining and and it decentralizes uh, energy um, all over the world so it is the thing that provides abundant energy and decentralizes is energy um, and because it's bounded by energy um, there's nothing that can stop that. It's a free market for energy instead of a centralized force for energy. Yeah, so how does the average person kind of get involved? Because I know that the, one of the tricks for most people, and even for myself early on, is 
like how do you get involved with Bitcoin and how do you get your head around it? Because I think a lot of people are buying it right now just because they think it's like, you know, uh, an investment and that it's going to go up. It's going to go up and then they'll sell it once it goes up or something like that. And they're just buying it for the I talked to a few people that have bought it early on and sold it and took their money off the table. But the way you're talking about it is it something that you need to kind of like keep and, and, and utilize when or I guess the better question is when do people start utilizing it in, in regular day to day activities? I use it every day. You do? I pay for things in it every day. Now it's, it's harder to do in Canada that in, in, is in some of the circular economies that are moving very fast around the world. But if you look at lightning layer two on Bitcoin, yeah. it's growing faster than the internet. Hmm. Um, so it is being used as a currency, a peer to peer currency all around the world. It's, it, it's unstoppable and it's growing faster than the internet. The, que the, the question why it's such a hard question from the system most people are so, so if you're measuring Bitcoin in the piece of paper the, the current construct then you think it's going up and you're trading Bitcoin for a piece of paper that you know is going to be devalued in the future this house I'm sitting in was 1.4 million dollars uh, four years ago now it's 2.1 million dollars measured in the piece of paper measured in Bitcoin four years ago is 300 Bitcoin now it's about 22 Bitcoin. Four years from now, this house is going to be two, worth two Bitcoin. And so all prices are falling to the marginal cost of production in Bitcoin as it, it reprices the existing system. Well, most people are pricing Bitcoin from, from a piece of paper, from the other system. So why, why that's so hard to see um, is because we don't have a, you don't have a, we don't have a mental model for what that looks like because it's never existed in the history of mankind that you had a decentralized and secure protocol that was outside of, uh, of, of capture from an existing system. We've always lived in a kind of a framework where we were told what money was and then money priced everything else. And that money was always manipulated in time. That, that caused a whole bunch of problems. This, uh, this is very different and it requires a lot of kind of, <laughs> breaking uh, breaking what you previously knew about money to understand this new protocol similar to uh, uh, the, the one similarity would be the internet itself um because that was a protocol that came in layers the first pro part of the protocol was tcp ip in, in the late 60s developed by Dar darpa that came in layers that changed all economies to everything's happening on top of the internet and the companies that didn't understand that were annihilated through that uh, through that change. The companies that understood it built the future. So that's what's happening in Bitcoin. The good news is you can buy your AI Summit tickets with Bitcoin. We do have a mechanism in there to you can buy tickets to the AI Summit for anybody out there listening and wanting to come and spend Bitcoin to buy your ticket. We will accept Bitcoin, and we've done that for a couple of small uh, events that we've held at our office too. We've taken Bitcoin. Scott Scott Deedles help helped us set that up. So, and we also have using his um, technology right now to use uh, employee rewards where we're, uh, people are selecting to take some of their payment of uh, salary in Bitcoin. Uh, it, it, excellent. Hold on to it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, one of the cool uses for Bitcoin that I mean, Scott and I do a Bitcoin show. Um, one of the things that we've talked about is like, again, we talked about some other countries, especially in some other countries the currencies get devalued we could take venezuela we could take all those things that if you're if you're all your savings are in those currencies and you can see them being inflated out of existence almost whereas digital currency like a bitcoin will actually give you that stability and portability to, to transfer into other parts of the world where you're not going to see that devaluation yeah it just just remember every single currency including the, the canadian currency that you're talking from is doing the same thing. It's just yeah. the rate. It, it, what you could say is the rate of theft in currency, yeah. and we laugh, and people here laugh at people in Argentina or not laugh, but they say, "How did those people not see it?" Yeah. If 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 anybody wants to look at this right now, just take Bitcoin price in Canadian pieces of paper, yeah. and and say it's in Canadian dollars, and then and then go Bitcoin price in Egypt or Bitcoin price in Turkey or Argentina, and you'll see. That relative to the piece of paper, it means a whole bunch of different things. And I think it's 60 million pieces of Argentina paper um, and 3 million pieces of Egypt paper 
and 60 something thousand or $70,000 of Canadian paper. Um, and if you watch that, you'll see all pieces of paper are losing value against Bitcoin. Um, and you're looking at a relative loss in, in, in a different region while thinking you're safe and yours. When, yeah. when, when I, when, what I already described is my house is falling in Bitcoin. All prices will fall forever in Bitcoin as long as it stays decentralized and secure. Yeah, and I use an example. I don't want to bring gold into it, but I use an example for gold sometimes and, and uh, just to give people an idea of how currencies are meant to be deflated by governments, or inflated, sorry, because they have a target rate actually of 2% and it usually goes way beyond the 2%, but they actually have a target rate because uh, you could go back and, you know, let's say, I'll just use a, a quick example. In Kelowna in 1998, you could buy a house for about $280,000, which, you know, gold was, I think, around $400 an ounce. Um, and then today's price is that house is worth, you know, close to $2 million and that gold is worth close to $2 million because they're both hard assets, right? So, but you're saying Bitcoin, on the other hand, actually protects you even more so that it actually is a deflationary currency. Not a deflationary currency. It's neutral and it allows the deflation in the market, the productivity growth to flow mm. to people through it. So, it's, it, um, so what ends up happening with gold is because of the centralization of gold, it hasn't act, uh, uh, and then you have derivatives on top of gold. Yep, a you, lot of them. Yeah, and and you can't uh, and you can't know how much gold is in Fort Knox or, or China. It becomes centralized, and you and everyone works in the derivative rather than uh, rather than the, the gold itself. So it gets suppressed in price through that. Um, and and so it, gold for a long time. It, um, Ideally, something like gold could work because gold isn't portable. You can't transit, trans, when I talked about the Lightning Network, trade it peer to peer all around the world. You have to trust centralized actors that will, will, won't harm you in gold. Gold always right. gets, gold always gets repriced throughout yeah. time. It always get uh, the rules change on gold because the centralization requires the gold. So 1971, Nixon, the Nixon shock was a good example um, of gold getting repriced. Before that, it was in the 30s. Um, uh, gold got uh, seized and repriced. It always gets repriced because, because of that throughout time. Bitcoin can't be repriced. So it's it, so there's 21 million hard, uh, 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 a hard cap on it. The nodes, it's decentralized, it's decentralized and secure. So, so no matter what you, 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 people that try to, to, to co-opt it or, or beat it or create a new coin that because always get wrecked against Bitcoin itself because it truly is outside the system bounded by energy, decentralized and secure. So lots of games get tried, um, to, to co-opt it, that lots will continually. But, uh, but it is truly something that's outside of the system. So it's repricing everything else. I don't want to keep you too long today because you will be at the AI Summit on September 27th. Are you going to bring any books with you or should people buy the book online and then bring it and get it signed by you or, or, or what? Yeah, How I, probably, that work? I probably won't bring any because I'm in out uh, uh, pretty quick. So I probably won't uh, bring any with me. So if people want them signed, buy one and bring it. Cool. Um, anything you're looking forward to in Kelowna? Have you, you've been to Kelowna, I imagine, a few times? Lots of times. Might, we might do a wine tour. We might come in a day early and do a wine tour. Cool. Um, is there anything that, that, you know, is prepping people for the conference that, you know, questions they should be kind of like, or that they can do some research on Bitcoin if they really want to get in, involved or they want to understand it more? I would, I would just I would, um, say this. It, and this is for me too. This was for me in Bitcoin. I came at a, I came at Bitcoin as a skeptic, um, and then I tried to kill it through every type of thing I could imagine to try to kill it. And I only became strong, stronger um, through that trying to kill it. Um, so people could ask me anything based on that, and I think I would have. Uh, I think I'd have any. any I'll throw the negative darts at you, and you'll deflect them. Yeah, whatever negative dart they have on it. But I would. But I would ask this question: If you were inside a system and all of the things were measured from inside that system, how would you know the other system existed? What would you, the, the inside the system look to the new system? 
And I would virt- and and what I find is most people are stuck inside the system measuring Bitcoin from that system rather than the inverse. So I'd ask for just an open it now like the internet, something that looked totally different that you could that's what is required required to understand Bitcoin, a really open mind and curious. Not not um, not um, not so open that I'm going to buy this completely, um, but open enough to say maybe some of the things I thought before were wrong. To be able to understand what's 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 happening here, it's a transition that's so profound because it, because everything we do as humans tries to create more efficiency. In fact, every business. Your business fails unless it competes and creates more value than what came before it. The output of what I just said, especially if you're creating more and more, and more value through AI and different businesses or decentralized energy or more abundant energy or all of these things, has to be prices fall. And if it's not prices fall because you vote with your time to get more value and a business fails unless it provides you more value, and anything else that stops that value from, from flowing to you is not an economic system. It's not a political system. It's a control system. And so if you give more strength to that control system, who do you have to blame? Yeah. Um, it's very thought-provoking. Now, obviously, you've done a deep dive into Bitcoin. I mean, you've centered your life around it and a successful life at that. And... Uh, I think uh, people are fortunate enough to hear from somebody that's kind of like wrapped themselves around Bitcoin and, and made a success out of it too. Yeah, thanks. And, and keep in mind, that wasn't the intention of Bitcoin for me at all. My intention was to sol- resolve the conflict um, of the free market is, is now nat- the natural state of a free market is deflation. And that would lead to abundance for 8 billion people on our planet. How do we get there from the system we live in? That was the result. It had mm. nothing to do with Bitcoin. Well, it's Bitcoin. a good side benefit. How's that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a good side benefit. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's essentially, it's investing my time in the world I want to see. There you go. For a better tomorrow. I mean, that's what I believe in that as well, right? So how do we get to a better tomorrow? And I think a lot of the technology is that path to a better tomorrow. And digital currency is part of that technology. Artificial intelligence, sustainable energy. All those things lead to a better tomorrow for all people, right? It, it kind of like equalizes people in different countries too. Like even if you look at solar energy, you know, like you can get solar energy in the desert, right? Where there was nothing and all of a sudden now you can, and then if you had a digital currency, now you give that person the power to to lift their life up, right? Yeah, and, and, and I want to be really careful there. We can get into this deeper in your conference, but, but I want to be really careful there. Digital currency or blockchain or crypto is mostly a scam. There's right. Bitcoin. Yeah. When I say digital currency, I do mean Bitcoin, right? Because I do know that yeah. there's a bunch of, I won't use the word that starts with SH and ends with coin, but yeah. uh, there's been a bunch of currencies that have been created no different than the Vancouver Stock Exchange used to be the old, uh, uh, you know, like pump and dump kind of yeah. S- yeah. scheme, right? Where, where um, you know, Somebody gets a stock and they pump it up and they move it around and then next thing you know, uh, they leave somebody holding the bag, right? So yeah, so the, so that's that's where Bitcoin is very different. Yeah. Um, but it, but it's also now just carry on what you just said. Technology is really great. Technology that produces productivity from a system that require is required to steal it through inflation is really bad for people. So if you if there's abundant energy because of technology, but it can't reach people because because prices keep going up, right? The center, you live in a th- an authoritarian control system, right? So so, so technology is great, um, fantastic because it's what we create. It's it's a free market creating value for all of us, and it's a competitive force. If that te- if the output of that of that game flows to society in the form of lower prices. It's terrible inside a system of control because that system right. controls you. Yeah, energy independence is what I'm going for. I do have solar on my roof. I do drive an EV. So like it is, you know, like if we can do more of that and if you can gain your own energy independence, that's a huge thing as well, right? So, yeah. 
Anyway, uh, looking forward to seeing you at the conference, looking forward to meeting you and chatting more and uh, figuring out a better path for everybody. Awesome. Look forward to it too. Awesome. Thank you for joining me today, Jeff. And uh, September 27th, uh, you can go online levelupconference.ca. You can buy your tickets and you can pay for them in Bitcoin. And uh, we'll get this out to you, Jeff. You can share it with your network and that. And then we hope to see lots of people at the conference here. Brilliant. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. And thank you for watching Kelowna Now.